Hey now, it was time for a new grill that I could take on the road in the trailer or to the park for little barbecues. So I picked up this Coleman three burner. It's the Road Trip Portable Grill, 285 square inches. I've heard good things about them. So I went ahead and bought one. This was the last one at the store. As you can see, the box was a little bit uh, worse for wear. This is actually also serving as my video proof that I haven't damaged this thing um, in case when I go and open it up, there's a problem with the grill. But anyway, super excited to open this up, put it together and see how it works. Normally this is the kind of job that I would do in the backyard. However, I currently have all of the children back there jumping on the trampoline and they are super loud and obnoxious right now. So I figured I would do this in the garage. Plus, I'm taking this on the road tomorrow for my daughter's birthday barbecue in the park. So here we are in the garage. Hopefully there won't be too much traffic coming by as we do this. So opening her up, a couple of big chunks of foam in here which seem to have protected this grill half decently. Super awkward. I'm gonna find a child here. Hang on a sec. All right, I've got a helper here. I'll kind of hold this steady. Definitely easier with two people. I'm gonna plunk this down. So in the box here, there was also this manual. So you set aside one piece of foam in the middle, and that was sort of supporting the two grates that were in here, covered in plastic. So I'm also gonna set those aside. Get this box out of the way. I could have probably just gone ahead and, and ripped apart or slit the, the side of one end of that box and just kind of peeled it apart. However, just in case there's an issue with this, I didn't want to have to go ahead and repair the box to transport it back to the store. So, thinking ahead, although looking at this, it's, it's unlikely I'll need to do that. But what do we have here for plastic? Let's see. It looks like it's tucked in right here. Just going to go ahead and clear this all off. Okay, on the inside, here, closer, so there's a piece for the stand, <clears throat> looks like you've got the tire tucked in here, smart way to transport it, and a bag with some parts and of course, or styrofoam, and some cardboard, kind of helping protect things. How is that? Oh, so that cardboard just slides up like that. When you know what to do. Okay, now that I've got this like this, I'm gonna pull this out. Looks like this was glued in. Yeah, I'm gonna go ahead and take a second just to pick that out. That's that glue that just kind of comes right off. There's, oh, double-sided tape, actually. Yeah. Uh, I'll do that. I'm going to take a quick look through the manual, because it seems like it's a smart play, and then we'll continue. So I got that double-sided tape off. However, um, there's definitely some residue left there. So I need to remove that, and to do so, I'm just going to use some paper towel here. A little oil on it. I'm just using olive oil, because that was handy. Had it right uh, close by in the house. Between that and my fingernail, my thumbnail, I'm able to get pretty much all of that residue off there. It's nice to be able to do that without using uh, like a harsher chemical like Goo Gone or Goof Off or any of those products. Just because when I go to fire this up, it'll stink and whatnot. And anything that I, there's the tiniest bit left on here, that shouldn't be the end of the world. I'm sure that'll burn off pretty quickly when I fire this up the first time. Which will be soon. All right, good enough. Okay, I'm gonna get rid of this, and we'll carry on. 
Okay, so now that that's cleaned up, um, I'm going to go ahead and remove this water pan here. And this is going to go back down with the lock on. And then apparently you want to flip this upside down. I did put down this little rug here just so that I can't accidentally scratch up the top surface. And now, what do we want to do this? This is supposed to stand. Oh, a safety lock. Slide lever to release. Beautiful. And so the side here it comes out like that. Brilliant. And then this comes down here. Now, in order to attach this, I'm going to use this one long bolt and this spacer here. And I'm going to put the spacer, no, I'm going to run the bolt with uh, the head side of it through from the front. Like that. Okay, sweet. So that's how it's going to fit. I'm going to do it with these legs in place here. That bolt ready. Spacer. And through just like that. Now surely there's a nut that goes onto there to hold it. And I do see one. Alright, I'm going to reconsult the instructions because I didn't notice that before. We'll be back. Okay, so I must be right here. It, uh, there is a picture in the manual that shows a bolt going on here. If you look really nice and close, however, it doesn't actually mention it in the instructions. But I'm go ahead and do that anyway. So I've got this lock nut. <laughs> I'm determined to use the tools that came with this set, even though I've got a nice ratchet right over there. Be a little bit quicker. Okay, how tight is that? I presume you don't want to go super, super tight on this. Just tight enough. That seems to be good. All right. Let me consult the manual once again. All right, so the next step is to attach the wheels. So I've got that right here. And each wheel is going to pass through a washer, through the wheel itself. Okay, just like that, and into the hole there. I'm going to finger tighten it, and then I'm going to use one of the little wrenches there just to tighten it the rest of the way. <clears throat> Figure it'll be a lot easier to finger tighten it most of the way than it will to be using this stupid thing. Okay, so it doesn't really tighten much more than that, so it does stay sticking out, which I suppose makes sense. Has a little bit of a wobble to it, but whatever. So again, just passing the bolt through the washer, and then through the tire, and then finger tightening. And using the, wall, the wrench here. The world's most horrible, horrible wrench. There. Okay. Perfect. All right. I think we are pretty close to done. At this point, there's this, what they call it, a toe handle. We'll have to confirm that with the manual again. But this is going to pop in just by pushing on those two little buttons, and it's locked in place. Okay. Once more back to the manual, and we'll see what else has to happen. Okay. I was correct. So it is now time to... Go ahead and get this back where it's supposed to go, which is really quite easy. I find if you just bring these legs to, um, up, okay, really you're just trying to get this out of this bracket, then carefully, if, if you don't hold this side, these tires are going to come smashing down pretty hard, but we'll go like that and just push it down. Now this, this is something I didn't do initially. This safety lock that's right here, 
there's a little a little way that you kind of lock it so that it's not in the way when you come to bring this down so now i can just bring it up and it snaps back in through this hole that's right here and it's locked in place so a person can now bring this thing up Whew, apparently that was not locked properly i'm gonna have to look at that here in a second okay and you can theoretically roll this around wherever you need to go but okay huh that's weird so this if you've got okay i'm noticing this now if you've got the lid locked but if you mess around with this a little bit and if you wiggle it it can slide towards the unlocked position enough that it can unlock on its own so that's one thing to be careful about i suppose all right there we are now doo -doo -doo. roll this around go to the campground wherever you're going sweet okay i'm going to set this back up here now see how easy it is to do so you would go slide this weaver into that lock location and then down up like that done I'm sure there's probably a slicker way to do that I'll play around with this here again and if I figure out a smoother move for that I will show you okay now I'm sure we have to install those grates all right, so after looking at the manual, there is a little bit of an easier way to, to set this up. Now to, to take it down, it's really easy. All you do, and I'm just putting my foot, putting my foot here um, on this right there, toe handle, and then just carefully guiding it down while holding onto that handle, pushing it and locking it into place. And then I'm just gonna double check, because this thing, of course, this little, uh, slide lock is in that lock location we move it like that and now it's good to go so in order to set it up i'll just do the opposite where i release that and then i put my foot here on this toe handle bring it up Ta-da! imagine that reading the instructions helped okay now onto the grates all right now that i figured out how to actually open and close this thing i'm going to go ahead and just make sure that i don't have any little bits of styrofoam or dust or whatever inside this water pan, which I'm going to replace. Put it this way with that max water line at the back end of the grill. Fits in there nicely. And then I've got the grates. It doesn't look like it matters which is at the front, which is at the back. Although this one has L's on it. No, oh, they both have L's. Thought maybe there's a left, right situation there but no okay and I'm putting them with the, the Coleman logo down just like that okay sweet and then it looks like when you go to close it you'll want to make sure that this latch here for locking is all the way in the unlocked so you don't come down hard on this and maybe wreck that or whatever get it down and locked beautiful and just to show but I still remember what the heck I'm doing here. Yeah, it's definitely got a little bit more weight to it now that those grates are in there. Hmm. Okay, sweet. So I'm not going to bother to lock that because I do want to come back up here. Perfect. Okay, time to get the propane set up. Okay, so by default, this unit uses these one pound cylinders, which I hate because they have gotten exorbitantly expensive. I've got a whole plan on a way to rig this up because I want to use this most of the time with my camping trailer and I've got that all set up with propane quick disconnects. So I'll do another video kind of changing this over to that system. But for now, because I'm using this tomorrow and I haven't ordered those other parts up, let's just set it up like this. So the, the um, place for that cylinder is right here. So I'm going to go apply some upward pressure and start to turn it this way. Which if you're looking from the top is counterclockwise, if you're looking from the bottom, that would be clockwise. <laughs> Took me a second. Okay, and I don't want to refund it so hard that I risk uh, breaking any, uh, this, uh, this connection here. It's on there uh, reasonably tight. The other thing that I probably should have pointed out is that I made sure that all of these um, <clears throat> burner knobs were set to off. Because otherwise you'd uh, start to have propane coming out here right now. And that's not what you want to do. I'm going to try to fire this up, but before I do, 
I need to throw a little bit of water into that water pan. And this is so that I believe it makes for easier cleanup, any grease and whatnot that uh, might happen when you're cooking. All right, I'm not going anywhere near that max fill line because I'm not going to be actually cooking anything on it right now. This is simply testing the system. So let's check it out. Oh, I can hear the propane. Come on, burner. You gonna work? Oh, yeah. Oh, that totally worked. I just didn't notice it. Okay, other side. Didn't even need to do that because it was close enough to the gas and the middle burner set up perfectly. This throws 20,000 BTUs, which is pretty sweet. A lot of other grills that I was looking at um, when I was kind of deciding what I wanted to go with, um, a bunch of them were 10,000, some of them were 12, 15,000. I, one of the big reasons I went with this is because it does have the 20, so that'll throw a decent amount of uh, heat if I want to sear stuff up and, and what have you. So yeah, there we go. Well, it's burning. Let's check it out. So just showing a nice close up here. I don't know if you can actually see the flame all that well in the video. I can assure you it is burning. There we go. Oh, yeah, I can see that there. And middle burner. Let's push that just in case. Oh, yeah. How about use my eyes, not the camera? Yeah, it's working as well. So here we go. Nice amount of heat. Super fun. I can't wait to use this tomorrow. Well, here we are. The morning of the party. I just fired up the grill here and I'm very excited to get some hot dogs and sausages on there and see how this handles. It's a little windy out here too, so that'll be a good test. Well, I would say that this is working pretty sweet. Really happy with uh, the heat that it's throwing and how quickly it's cooking these dogs. So after getting back from the little barbecue there, I, I didn't have a chance to clean this when we were at the park. I didn't bring a damp towel with me. Apparently, uh, Coleman recommends cleaning this with a damp towel, even like as soon as you finish using it, I think while it's still a little hot. Um, so everything kind of had a chance to cool down. I did clean out the drip tray though while I was there. So that's all really nice and clean. And then with this, I just went ahead and gave it a little scraping with my cast iron scraper just to get rid of any of the cheese and stuff that had melted onto and burned onto it. And then a little kitchen scrubby on it, rinsed it off, dried it off, and then just gave it a very, very light coating of oil just to help protect it. But other than that, cleaned up super well. Really impressed with this. This worked awesome. It's going to do exactly what I want it to do for camping and for little excursions to the park. So, and so after one use, you know, uh, thorough, thorough use, um, yeah, I'm really, really quite happy with this. So hopefully this was helpful. And until next time, keep it at 11.